untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we are revisiting Grixis midrange with the additions from The Brothers War as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and the deck got a ton of awesome new tools including two planeswalkers starting with Sahili, four mana for a three loyalty planeswalker, can minus two right away to make a pair of hasty 1-1 thopter tokens with flying and then can also plus one to scry one and then we can tap an untapped artifact we control and if we do draw a card as well so we can either tap the thopter tokens we generate or maybe a blood token from harvester or a treasure token from the shaman from fable of the mirror breaker so there's quite a bit of synergy with the plus one probably won't be using the minus four very often as we get an emblem saying artifact creatures we control get plus one plus one and then artifact spells we cast also get a one mana discount could maybe be relevant if trying to cast a larger blade coil serpent which is another great new tool here a five four that we can cast for six mana and then we can kind of mix and match which colors of mana we spend to cast it and then for every double blue spent to cast it we get to draw a card for every double black each opponent discards a card and for each double red the serpent gets plus one plus so and trample and haste until end of turn so usually we like to have at least double reds for the serpent so it can attack right away and then depending on the opponent's hand we can make them discard or just draw a whole bunch of cards and thanks to the flexible mana cost we can also sink additional mana into it in the late game so if we have eight or ten mana we can potentially draw four or five cards and then we also have two copies of Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim, which has been quite powerful so far in the new standard. Five mana for four loyalty, says whenever we draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi, and that means the zero ability to draw a card now also adds one loyalty, and the minus two makes a two-two blue spirit creature token with vigilance, and says whenever we draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, and the spirit token has also been very impressive, and can very quickly get out of hand since we have a ton of other ways to draw cards besides Teferi himself, Vigilance also helps play around opposing copies of Wandering Emperor, which is still definitely a card in standard. And then if we ever get to 12 loyalty, we can also use a minus 12 as a one-sided board wipe. And then other new additions include Misery's Shadow at 2 mana, which has also impressed me in the Mono Black Aggro deck. A 2-2 two -two that will exile opposing creatures when they die. And for 1 mana we can give it plus one plus 1 until end of turn. So a great mana sink if we have a ton of mana laying around. And just a threat of activation makes it very tricky for the opponent to block. And then I think that covers most of the new additions. Also have two copies of Go for the Throat to complement Infernal Grasp as our spot removal of choice at two mana at least. And then at one mana we still have Cut Down as well as Voltage Surge which can also play with some of our artifacts to deal damage. Can be more useful at maybe finishing off a Planeswalker compared to Cut Down. And then we also have a few counter spells with Make Disappear, helpful for countering big expensive plays from the opponent, or maybe handling enchantments, which we otherwise can't easily remove. Then still playing the full set of Harvester as it has a ton of synergy throughout the deck, especially the one with the reflection of Kiki Jiki, if we ever get to it, as it can copy the Harvester to take down the opponent's creatures one by one. And of course, Fable still remains one of the best cards in Standard, and also has a great synergy throughout. And then two copies of the Bankbuster, which can be another nice card draw engine, and we can potentially keep up two mana, either draw with the Bankbuster, or counter something with Make Disappear, or use our other instant speed removal, even pumping the Shadow, so having all that instant speed play available is also quite nice. And then at 3 mana, just a single copy of Liliana of the Veil can have its moments at maybe pressuring control decks by making them discard, and the minus 2 can also be a clean answer to larger creatures. And then I'm only playing 2 copies of a Corpse Appraiser since I needed to make room for some of the new cards, but still a nice source of card advantage if we can exile a creature from a graveyard, and can also be nice when copied with a Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Then 2 copies of Shieldred, still a staple of these black midrange decks, can drain the opponent when they draw while gaining life when we draw extra cards, so it can also help stabilizes from a precarious life total and then since we no longer have the Meat Hook Massacre as a sweeper, I made room for one copy of Hostile Takeover, which can also potentially catch the opponent off guard, shrink one of their creatures into 1-1 one, one while growing one of our creatures up to a 4-4, and then dealing 3 damage to each creature. Did not want to include the new Brotherhood's End, the 3 mana sweeper, since double red can be tricky to cast, especially early on when you need it most, and it also damages our own Planeswalkers, which can sometimes be a drawback. And then the mana base has 25 lands total, not too many changes, just and it's one copy of Underground River from the new set. Otherwise, just want to have a nice spread of dual lands. And then, of course, Xander's Lounge, also very important to fix our mana. 
and then the channel lanes offer a bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Bit of early removal, harvester, and then good mana, so we're ready to cast whatever we draw. Probably playing a marsh tapped on turn one means no turn one cutdown, but will uh, help us out in the future. An opponent on what could be a soldier tribal deck. Officer could eventually be a problem. I think I still play a marsh, so we're guaranteed a two drop here, like Harvester. And then maybe keep cut down for a slightly more relevant creature, like a Valiant Veteran, which we can then also exile with the Corpse Appraiser. That seems fine. Opponent could be playing counter spells, although don't expect a ton of them, so I'm okay letting them untap. Otherwise I could have killed Veteran main phase. Just want to give them less information to work with. Okay. There's also an argument for playing the two mana removal to keep the more efficient removal spell for later. But uh, this way we can kill larger creatures as well. So I'll play Corpse Appraiser. Exile Veteran before they can distribute those plus one plus one counters. And uh, yeah, maybe working towards a Blade Coil is not a bad idea. Could also grab Haunted Ridge so I don't take damage of casting Harvester. Since we do have Bankbuster as a card draw engine. So maybe I should just take the more conservative approach. Save myself the damage. And then try and leverage Bankbuster to find more action. Okay, Shield of Argive we're happy to take out, but there's a Hostile Takeover, so that can wipe the opponent's board next turn, assuming no counter spells or Thalias. So maybe we just play a Bankbuster here and pass. If our opponent does play Thalia, it will mess up our plan significantly. So, to avoid that, I would need to keep up one of my two mana removal spells. Although with the shield in play, I guess I wouldn't be able to kill Thalia anyways. So yeah, it's either kill the shields and try and play kind of a fair game. Or the greedy play, which is Bankbuster, pass, take a hit, and then take over next turn. Yeah, let's go with the greedy play. And then I guess we need to draw now since the shield also prevents us from drawing with Bangbuster in their turn. Gonna be a Siege Veteran. That's fine. And an Officer. So now with the Siege Veteran, our opponent will get a bunch of 1-1 Soldier tokens in return if we wipe their board. So we could decide to kill the Siege Veteran first. And then I think I'll kill the officer now by trading, so at least an extra token is dealt with through our sweeper. Take over, shrinking the shield. The opponent will get a bunch of 1-1s, one but uh, they're down to two cards in hand here. So we should be able to take over to the late game. So take three down to eight, and then can play Harvester plus Fable. Or I can go Harvester, keep up some instant speed removal, or maybe Fable, keep up removal. Close call. The upside is that Harvester crews Bankbuster, so if they have removal, I can at least get a 4 4 on defense. So I like that aspect of it. Could also go Harvester plus Fable and then take one damage. Probably don't need instant speed removal available here. Possible our opponent can make two 1 1s at instant speed. Or maybe some other removal spell. Right, destroy evil to hit our enchantment, fair enough. So 
so they shouldn't have any great attacks. Even if they draw another Lord. My opponent's actually going for it. So, yeah, block block seems fine. I don't think I need to crew Bankbuster. What are they likely to have? Maybe a Wandering Emperor, I guess. Which would be a reason to block with Bankbuster, and then they just kill the Shaman instead. Although we have a Backup Harvester. So I think this is fine. Alright, just an eye Ganjo. That's very much acceptable. Make Disappear should still be helpful. And I think I like the extra mana here. These are artifacts, so I won't be able to go for the throat. But we still have a Bangbuster we can crew should they exile Harvester with like a Brutal Cathar here. Opponent passes. And I'll draw since we can still counter if needed. And then it's just a matter of time before we can completely take over. Also not opposed to drawing with Bankbuster main phase here to see what else we can find. Another Fable. So Shaman token attacks. I'm okay if it trades for their 1-1s. One Play Fable and might end up cycling the lounge end of turn. Alright, there's Thalia. Don't think we need to counter here, we can just go for the throat. Keep our counter spell for maybe a bigger threat. If I cycle lounge, I will be tapped out of Make Disappear. But I don't expect any threatening instance here. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, Fable's gonna very quickly take over once we get to Reflection of Kiki Jiki. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a pretty clear game plan here. Play Harvester and hope to eventually copy it with Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Opponent with a Swamp. Mono Black so far. And Underdog. Okay, could hold up a counter spell. If our opponent is mono black, there's no 3-drop like Fable I really need to counter. So I feel like I'm okay tapping out for Harvester. Even if Liliana of the Veil were to show up, it's not a disaster. Opponent offering the trade. Yeah, I'll accept. They might have a Trespasser to Exile Harvester, which is okay. Yep. We'll go for Fable, and then we'll see if Trespasser stays back to block, or if they maybe have Shieldred, which would have been a reason to keep up Make Disappear, although we've got Double Harvester, which can still answer Shieldred eventually. And we can always get lucky and find a removal spell. Now the question is, do I draw with our... Uh, Fable and take a bunch of damage of Shieldred. Could tap out for Sahili, just make two Thopters, but it feels like I need to play Harvester here to catch back up, which probably means I can't afford to keep Make disappear, since counter spells are probably not great when we're on the back foot. And hope they don't have something like 5 mana Invoke Despair. So maybe Make disappear and a land can go. This turn play double harvester. And take a bunch of damage of Shieldred. And then if one of the harvesters survives, we can take out Shieldred next turn. Alright, opponent just blitzing underdog, so not the most threatening turn. And an all-out attack. So now we can just trade for Shieldred if we'd like. Although next turn we can essentially kill it with a single Harvester. Although keeping a Harvester around for Reflection could be nice. So we have some options. Yeah, I guess blocking like this is fine. 
Keep our life total nice and high. And then we'll find something else to combo with the Fable. So sadly cannot prevent the damage from Shielded right now. But Harvester can take care of it. And then I probably just play Misery's Shadow, keep up Meg disappear. Opponent just playing another underdog, that's fine. And let's make that two. Okay, now I might be interested in countering one of them, just to use my mana here. Since we are at four after all. And then Shadow can grow up to a 4-4, so it can block an underdog. Infernal Grasp to deal with Reflection. And an Evolved Sleeper. Okay. Underdog attacks. Well, it's kind of a free block here. And then Sahili could draw, could make two Thopters. I think I'm okay drawing. And a cut down answers Evolved Sleeper. Keep that on top. I think we keep the shadow back for a blitz thunder dog. Which means I need to play out the land. Land 5, do we see Invoke Despair? Nope, Tainted Adversary. Making two zombies. So they can go wide, although Sahili can also make two Thopters here. And Shieldred was great. Now play shield roots. Sahili can draw. I know exactly and then the two blood want. tokens can also gain more life with shield root. Don't think I'm interested in attacking. Can grow shadow large enough to trade for adversary. And another adversary, okay. First one attacks. Trade happens. And a voltage surge can deal with a 3-4 adversary as well. So I think I'm still happy drawing since we have shielded in play. And another fable seems fine. So I'll play Kicked Surge now. Sacrificing maybe a tapped blood token. And then I'll copy Shaman attack. At least with one Shaman, maybe even two. And then we can always sacrifice blood tokens to gain life with Shieldred, so we're not in any immediate danger. And then next turn, Hasty Thopters with Sahili could end the game. 
And our opponent explodes, close one here against Mono Black. Luckily dodged and invoked despair onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems fine. Harvester into Fable, if we find a third land that is. Let's see what our opponent's up to, red-white. Okay. Turn to Kumano, so an aggressive deck. And, uh, yeah, could attack with Harvester, can keep it back to maybe block a hasty creature next turn. If it's something like a Cavalier as a 4-4, we wouldn't be able to block it with Harvester anyway. Could double block it, although it's not a great trade. So I guess we'll uh, send in the Harvester. If they play a Stormseeker, that would be... I guess a 4-4 uh, a as well, so yeah, I think uh, I'll just try and race for now. Does mean cutdown will be less effective. Alright, infantry could technically still cut down if our opponent doesn't have a one mana instant, but from the way they've been playing it feels like they have something up their sleeve. So... I could use Harvester and then cut down, although that's a lot of resources to deal with the infantry. But yeah, if it's like a one mana defensive trick, it still probably doesn't work in our favor. I'll uh, discard Sheevan Reef. Question is whether I want to discard cut down. If I don't make them use a trick, then they'll probably just untap and have access to it next turn. Play something to trigger infantry and then still have the one mana instant available. So cut down's probably going to be pretty awkward to use. Unless I just want to, like, kill Kumano with it. So I'll just discard land for now. And see where we end up. So yeah, I could use Harvester, Shrink Down Infantry, and then try and cut down. It's pretty drastic, I think. I'll just play a Shieldred for now and pass. And then keep Harvester to copy with Reflection. Shieldred triggers successfully. So they don't seem to have any instant speed answers to it in hand. Another infantry. And an attack. So what could they have here? Pump spells. There's a lot of different ones they could have. Or it could just be a lightning strike to finish off Shieldred if we, let's say, block the etching. So what I could do is block... Etching with a Shaman token, see if there's a response. If not, I'll happily just take the damage. And then once Etching is gone, we don't need to worry about our creatures getting exiled as much. Okay, opponent fires off Antagonize. So at least now we're clear to cut down the smaller infantry. And I'm just gonna do it now. Could use Harvester on Etching, but when we have Reflection, I don't see a reason to. Small fear of a potential Wandering Emperor exiling Shieldred. Think it's still worth it to get the hidden. And yeah, opponent explodes. Reflection just gonna put too much pressure on them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing red mana. Although I don't have any red spells I need to cast right away. So I'll try it. Tapped Martian 1, turn 2, can either play Shadow or hold up our Counterspell. And uh, yeah, I'll play Shadow. And then we can keep up our counter starting next turn. Opponent on a Soldier deck with the Aviator. Okay, so we can attack into it. And then only pump once to keep up, make disappear. Sadly, didn't have the rat to play Fable on 3, which would have been great, but we'll still have a shield run on 4. And a Siege Veteran I'm happy to counter. Alright, let's hope there's no Brutal Cathar to exile shield run, since we don't have an answer to it at the moment. Gonna be a tactician to grow their soldiers. Fair enough. And yeah, don't have any place other than pumping Misery's Shadow. 
do I want to race here? Opponent can hit me for 7, but I can hit him for 10. Plus 2 is lethal, so opponent actually has to chum block here, which is kind of crazy. They don't, so now I just pump 4 times. That's 10, plus 2 more from shieldred. Who needs red mana after all? On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Could fall behind against a very aggressive start. But otherwise, we have a Mig Disappear, which could also play well alongside Bank Buster. Opponents appearing Esper Colors. So there's no 3-drop outside of maybe like a Rafine or Wedding Announcement that I absolutely would like to make disappear. So I could try and resolve a Bank Buster. Or we could be more patient here since we don't know for sure what we're up against. Whether it's control or more mid-range. Opponent passes, so it does look more controlling. Really want to hit my 4th land drop, Fable likely gets answered in some way. But uh, I don't have land for at the ready, so I'm not guaranteed to be able to, let's say, play Bang Buster and keep up our counterspell next turn. So I think I have to make a play, so I guess we'll get the Fable countered here. Alright, that resolved. Could still destroy evil the enchantments. Or avoid rents. That's fair. Not too sad with that exchange. Still get our Shaman. And the extra treasure will certainly come in handy. Our opponent main phasing a memory deluge maybe to play around a counter spell. That's okay. Now we can resolve Bank Buster, which will play well with the extra counter here. And I wouldn't be able to draw main phase. So I can't hit my land drop necessarily, but that's okay. So we can potentially counter an opposing Teferi, if that's what they have. Although we could also potentially deal with a spirit token they make and then kill Teferi afterwards. Alright, opponent's going to march the bank buster. We'll draw on the way out. And hope to hit a land. Shieldreds, okay. And a land, perfect. So now the question is, do I try to resolve to ferry? Or do I play it more conservatively, play Harvester, keep up Counterspell? Having a Teferi in play would be pretty nice. Opponent could of course still have a Counterspell of their own. But we have several Teferis, so let's see if we can force the issue here. Right, negates. One counter spell down at least. Put on deluging main phase again. And a cut down for the shaman, so now we need a land to play the fairy. And we didn't find it. That's unfortunate. Can go for shieldreds. All their opponents likely to have some spot removal at the ready. Or I can go Harvester, keep up, make disappear, but it's not applying a whole lot of pressure. So I think I'm still forced to go for Shieldred here. And then hope their hand is all counter spells, pretty much. Okay, Shieldred triggers once at least. And a Tolarian Terror for one mana can uh, definitely get in the way. Okay, land is good. So we're kind of happy with the status quo. Can keep up double make disappear. Maybe try an infernal grasp with the terror end of turn and then start attacking. So I'll just pass. Wandering Emperor doesn't really stop Shieldred from draining them. Although it seems efficient to counter it here. And then I wouldn't be able to Infernal Grasp the Terror end of turn. It's the only drawback. I think it's still worthwhile.
terror attacks. Possible they have another Emperor they're going to try and use to exile a tapped Shieldred. Alright, Void Rend. That one is uncounterable. So, yeah, that's going to work. So that must have been their draw for the turn, since they didn't kill it in their upkeep. Indulgence is fine. Okay, so we're falling behind now. Opponent close to flashing back Deluge. Can try and resolve to Fairy at least. But if we go up to 5 loyalty, it still dies to Terror. And the Spirit would be forced to chump, and that's no guarantee to work out. So we probably try and kill the Terror here while we can. Although that kind of plays into the opponent's control plan. So now if they have a Planeswalker like Teferi, they get to resolve it. Just another 4 mana Deluge instead. And another 1 mana Terror. Okay, so I could go for Serpent. That one at least doesn't get negated, so that might be worthwhile. Only have three black mana, so we can only make them discard one at most. And then we'll draw. And haste. That resolves. And we'll smash. Opponent accepts. Still trample for one. Okay, so there's triple deluge in the graveyard. That's bad news. Although we can try and force this uh, to ferry through, especially if they main phase deluge again. So next turn, to ferry, make a token. And now with an untapped plan, I could hold up, make disappear as well. So I'm happy to counter another flashback deluge. Indulgence to draw two is pretty good. And the Sunset Ravelry will... Uh, Gain them some life, make two one ones, but does not draw a card at least. Opponent discarded a cut down earlier, and as soon as it picks up a counter, we'll get out of range from another one. Hostile takeover could also surprise the opponent and potentially uh, remove those one ones. I think I'm interested in making another token before we draw. Hit for three. Could cycle lounge to grow our illusion at instant speed. And our point's got another wandering emperor. That's fine. Not gonna counter it. We have infernal grasp to interact at instant speed instead. I hope you're ready to lose. Makes a samurai. And yeah, the vigilance on these tokens also. Helps us avoid the minus two from Emperor. And a cycled lounge is perfect. Opponent did not like that. And I think I'll pass. Don't need to overextend into a potential board wipe. Since they could potentially depopulate and even a disappear with casualty wouldn't be able to counter it if I were to play Harvester here. And then next turn the takeover could actually get us close to a lethal since it would grow a 2-2 two, two up to a 4-4, four, four, still has its counters. And deal with the 1-1 one, one token. So there's another Samurai which I might Infernal Grasp here. Although, Takeover still deals with it. Can't imagine our opponents holding a negate. 
So maybe we can bait that out with the Infernal Grasp and then take over next turn. Alright, they let that one slide. Sahili's not bad either. So I could make some hasty Thopters. Then I don't have the mana to take over unless the fairy draws into a land. So I guess I could start there. No land. Yeah, takeover could be lethal. Although our opponent has so much interaction left that I doubt it. So how about we just attack our opponents, opponent chumps, and we'll take it from there. I think I still try to play Sahili. See what her response is. Okay. So if I go for the Thopters, then we might be overextending into board wipe a little bit. But I need the artifacts to start actually pulling ahead with Sahili. So maybe I play Harvester and then use the Blood Token to draw with Sahili. And then if there's a board wipe, I can still follow up with the uh, Thopter Tokens. Another Sahili seems reasonable to keep. In case they somehow answer the first one. And then now we'll attack. Just go face. No point in attacking the Wandering Emperor. Opponent chumps. And then we're reasonably well set up to recover from a board wipe. Actually close to having lethal since we could make two pairs of Thopters. Opponent's got the farewell, so I can basically tap them out here with the make disappear. Is that worth it? I could put them to one with double Sahili. And actually with a hostile takeover... Let's see. Yeah, if I can go... Sahili, make two Thopters, takeover, grow up to a 4-4, and then play another Sahili, we could kill them. So I just need to draw a land off Teferi or my draw step. And the Wandering Emperor, I guess, could make a 2-2, but that still dies to Hostile Takeover, and the Thopters fly anyway. So counter farewell. Okay, cut down. So, yeah, I could go for glory here if I draw land. I think that's worthwhile. Go for the throat instead. So now we're a little bit short, sadly. So I guess we'll just kill Wandering Emperor with the Sahili Thopters now. And uh, could follow up with another Sahili to draw or play Harvester. Yeah, if I take over, then I'm one mana short. I'm a tough opponent. Win or lose, it'll be a thrill. And there's a land we need it. Probably bottom it now. Okay. Well, we'll see how this turns out. Opponent has a lot of cards in hand still. And now we're out of counter spells, so. We'll have to make do with our removal spells instead. Okay, we get to untap. And then start making more spirit tokens with the fairy. Sahili, probably fine to draw. I imagine they'll have some spot removal or another wandering emperor. So I don't think going for more thopters is necessarily the best idea. Abandon Myers, not the worst, since it could get back even a Blade Coil Serpent here or another Teferi. So actually, fine to keep that on top. Grow the Spirit Token. And attack, and I guess we still technically have lethal. 
with five damage here, but I doubt it's going to be enough. Hole break or horror, we could try and go for the throats, although they're likely to have a negate. I guess I should go for the throat now before they get to block. That's going to be a dissipate instead. So they can bounce the token. Could still follow up with a hostile takeover. And finish off the hole breaker. Assuming no one mana interaction. And then take over. Shrinking the hole breaker, growing a thopter. That works. And then we'll pass. So our opponent is still at three. It's gonna main phase flashback deluge. That resolves. And then next turn, Sahili could make two more hasty thopters to try and present lethal. Although I imagine our opponent will find more answers here. Maybe finally a Void Rent to deal with one of my Planeswalkers. Yep, to ferry down. I lost Abandon Meyer could try and get it back. And another Revelry. Okay, so I think I kill my own Thopter here. That will prevent the opponent from drawing and from making two 1-1s. One So they just gained four life. Fable's not bad. Okay, so abandon Mire for mana, get back to Fairy, step one. Shieldred also tempting, and I guess even the Blade Coil would be close to lethal here if it resolves. But the Fairy we can play right now, so I think I still prefer it. Make a token. And then I'll draw with Sahili, I think. Okay. Another Deluge, hopefully the last one. And they've probably seen most of their deck by now. So if they have any win conditions or great answers left, we probably would have seen it by now. Indulgence to draw two. Four mana left. So we've got some pretty nice ones left in the deck. Another Blade Coil Serpent, definitely at the top of our list. Right, another Void Rends deals with Teferi. One mana left. So, yeah, they could have a cut down, maybe. Although if I make two Thopters and draw with a Blood Token, we're pretty likely to get there. Start here. Xander's Lounge can also grow. So even now, cut down on a Thopter would still give us lethal. And looks like we finally got there. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely a long grindy game against Asper Control. But, uh, yeah, nice mix of threats that uh, were able to defeat Farewell, which can otherwise be quite backbreaking for a lot of creature decks. But a uh, mix of Planeswalkers with Sahili and Teferi proved to be great here in this matchup. So, yeah, all new additions from the Brothers War, Blade Coil, Sahili, Teferi, which were kind of the all-stars in this final game at least. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.